Hi folks, uh, welcome to... Um, I haven't seen myself in a mirror in a while, hold on. Hi guys, now uh, this is Andres again with another Tropical Verde virtual tour. This time, actually a virtual cruise. We'll be going to the Galapagos Islands, the Enchanted Islands. Um, and for that, let's start with, as usual, the map. These islands are here, located off of the coast of Ecuador, right here at about a thousand kilometers from the continental South America, here. And this is a province of, um, of Ecuador, but also a national park and a UNESCO's a heritage site, natural heritage site, declaring 1978. Um, is the first national park of Ecuador, declared in 1959. Um, where does this name come from? Galapagos it comes from the very famous Galapagos giant tortoises. Um, the Galapagos etymologically means a saddle. They uh, sit on a horse, a saddle, because a few uh, species of uh, these giant tortoises in the Galapagos have this shape on the shells of a saddle. And um, also part of this is uh, very important, part of these um, uh, different shapes um, is part of the charm of the Galapagos because a uh, time ago in uh, 1835 as you know Darwin came in and uh, used the knowledge that he accumulated in the Galapagos to uh, afterwards come up with his uh, theory of evolution based on several facts um, and several differences like the shape of the, um, of the saddles or these uh, uh, shape of the Gyanopuntia cactus that were we have land iguanas they are woody and not uh, green in here so that they don't get eaten by the iguanas or the tortoises um, different things like that as you know Darwin also used uh, not only these um, uh, iguanas out of which they ha there are three subspecies no three species of land iguanas in Galapagos but also, and more importantly, or more famous, are these, the uh, finches, the Galapagos finches. Not the most attractive of the passerines, I can say, but because of this, they became famous. It was an interesting thing from a common ancestor that uh, populated the islands. It uh, created this evolutionary radiation where several different uh, species Started, started to appear out of this common ancestor, showing different shapes and sizes of their bills based on the availability of food, and so that they don't compete among themselves, they um, evolved into these and adapted into these different shapes of bills. This is a book that actually I published together with a couple of friends, Miles McMullen and Louis Dee, and so I'm going to be using a couple of times this book. Uh, and this other book that I, that I published to show you a little bit about the Galapagos. So right now there are 17 of these finches and I'll show you where we'll be trying to find those. Um, some more history, the Galapagos uh, were a military base at some point for the US, um, they were a prison for the Ecuadorian government, uh, they were a base for pirates, um, but because of wonderful things like this the proximity that you can get to some of the unique animals of the world, like this land, uh, sorry, this marine iguana, <clears throat> how close you can get to things like that. These areas were declared a national park and a UNESCO's uh, heritage site. We um, swim with the green uh, turtles and uh, look for blue-footed boobies, sometimes they are a bit too close and you can only photograph their feet. <laughs> and uh, you have also a chance to see a ton of uh, Galapagos sea lions um, that uh, are just uh, really, really nice to watch uh, around there. All these wonderful things, uh, this archipelago has a ton of endemic species. It means that they are species that can only be seen here. It is not super rich and very very diverse, it is not, but the things that are in the Galapagos or a lot of the things that are in the Galapagos are unique to here, to the Galapagos. Um, 
yeah again you can see them really well for this tour we use a boat um, and we travel in a boat for about seven days or so looking for the different things that are scattered around the different islands okay we don't stay in a, in a, in a hotel in the islands we actually go on a boat um, and uh, from the boat we normally do several uh, cruisings that are very very relaxed and very nice like here we're going um, next to the big island of Isabela uh, having a beer on on the go uh, chatting a little bit <laughs> and um, we also do uh, some dinghy rides if there's like caverns or grottos and, uh, and some other things when we go inland sometimes we have dry landings or wet landings and we have a chance to relax and enjoy the, the environment um, but these uh, areas here are so important and, and very very vulnerable that um, things like these introduce a species like these uh, smooth-billed anis and several other things that were introduced like goats and cats and uh, different things even flies uh, presented a big issue for the um, ecological system of the Galapagos and therefore the Galapagos right now are very 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 uh, strict in um, the regulations on how to visit the islands so I'm telling you that we can have a cruise to go um, around the islands and this is the example we're in, a, in one of these cruises but the government the National Park does not allow you to go just anywhere there are specific visit points and um, you cannot just choose wherever you want to go you try to have you have to try to find the um, cruise that will allow you to get the most of the endemics that are scattered around the islands in this video what I'm showing is for instance a place that we just couldn't go in this particular tour you see the mangroves that are scattered here in um, the border of this island here in uh, San in, in Isabela this that I'm filming that will be over really really soon showing that it is a very small patch is the whole of the territory of one particular bird the mangrove finch which was uh, brought to the brink of extinction due to these um, introduced uh, flies and uh, because of this they closed the site and we cannot go anymore you can see here <laughs> our clients trying to see this mangrove finch from <laughs> the boat but it is impossible really we're trying to use telescopes and trying to use a lot of imagination but no chance that uh, only is to tell you that we cannot just go anywhere we have to try to find the best itinerary of a boat that allows us to get the most number of endemic species okay yeah we're not gonna find from that distance this bird here that is the mangrove finch we tried we didn't get it I got this one in a previous trip um, when we were able to get to these mangroves now uh, this is what we will be doing in this particular tour um, we fly from Ecuador from Quito typically into the Galapagos and spend six days here and what we do is try to visit the main islands where scattered birds or the, the different species are scattered and uh, we have to visit for sure San Cristobal, Española, Floriana, Santa Cruz, Bartolomé we try to visit Isabela eh, when we can and uh, Genovesa like this we get 90 five percent of all the endemics which is a really good rate there are a couple that are just impossible not cannot get like the mangrove finch is just here and we have now vampire finch that it is in these islands much higher up in the north so um, it is impossible now to get them all in any case for that I'm gonna start with like backwards really I'm gonna start in San Cristobal okay yeah so San Cristobal uh, also known or previously known in the English name by Chatham um, is a very picturesque island the eastmost island and the oldest of the islands really um, has a few interesting things uh, we typically do 
uh, land in a particular area where we can see from the distance the sleeping lion, this rock here, the Leon Dormido, is a very cool place. Um, and um, we look for one particular bird that we can only and exclusively see it in here in San Cristobal, which is the San Cristobal Mockingbird, the first of four species of mockingbirds that are unique to the Galapagos. We got this already in the, in the first five minutes after landing. One thing that you will notice is that the Galapagos are very easy burning. Um, we also look for this other finch, uh, the grey warbler finch in, um, in these areas. Uh, they are only in the east side of the, of the archipelago. Uh, we start getting some of the most widely, widely distributed um, endemics to the Galapagos, like the uh, Galapagos uh, dove and uh, Galapagos flycatchers. And uh, for um, gold lovers, we have another of the endemics, the lava gold. We tend to see it very easy in, uh, throughout the tour, but uh, we can get it from the first time in, in uh, San Cristobal. The lava gold is um, fairly dull gold, but uh, it feeds by night. Is, is quite an interesting thing. Um, and some of the things that are not necessarily endemics and more widely distributed, like uh, blue-footed boobies that are quite famous in the, in the Galapagos. Um, and also uh, mangrove warbler, a subspecies of um, yellow warbler that it is resident to the Galapagos. It always has this red cap. If you have a chance and we go in uh, land into the city in uh, San Cristobal, you can do some shopping and get the typical t-shirts that uh, they sell with a blue-footed boobie saying, I love boobies. Well, you can do that. Then, what we do is we take this cruise here and navigate down to Española overnight. Española is one of the nicest of the islands. It's got a lot of different things. And um, the um, cliffs in the area hold one of the most wanted birds in the archipelago for the birders and is right here. Do you see it? Yep, let's zoom in. Waved albatross. So um, from April to December the waved albatrosses come to the um, island of Española that is the only island in the archipelago where they uh, breed and they do some display dances and uh, and uh, moves that are not necessarily <laughs> subtle, but um, yeah, it's it's a pleasure to see these uh, these birds in land. Not only when we see them when we cruise on the on the boats, um, they are beautiful beautiful uh, albatrosses. Really, let's enjoy a little bit of this video. This albatross, however, is not endemic to Galapagos because uh, it, well, technically it's not, but it breeds in another island off of the coast of Ecuador called the Isla de la Plata, so we cannot really count it as an endemic endemic. But um, there are about um, 32 species that are endemic to the Galapagos. Uh, I'm not counting this one in, um, in that number. So. Um, a couple more photos is impossible to not to take photos. This is a perfect destination for photography, as you can see, and we will repeat on several things. But when we come to Española, we come for this special bird. Look how ugly it is. <laughs> it's one of the finches again, uh, recently split. This is the Española ground finch. Believe it or not, is the one of the real targets there um, that we see it very, very easy, really. Uh, Another of the targets here, the second of the mockingbirds, Española mockingbird, quite a confiding bird um, that uh, is probably the tamest in the world. You cannot go away from them. <laughs> you bring your bottle to drink water and they just jump on you because they want that. It's just a little water in the Galapagos, uh, fresh water that uh, they try to get it out of you, but you should not do it. You can get a big fine. Um, but these uh, mockingbirds don't care, they are just tame. Um, this is a, one of the most iconic subspecies of um, marine iguana that it is in Española that has these red tones to their bodies. 
The cliffs also hold other things like red-billed tropic birds and um, Nazca boobies, brown noddies, and several several things breed in this in this island. Another of the endemics that it is easiest here in Española than in other islands is the Galapagos hawk. And these ones are adult, and uh, this I took the picture a year after I got him as a as a youngster in the same rock, just from a bit of a different angle with a boat in the background. Um, the islands are also famous for their lava lizards and this is the Española lava lizard. Um, quite a prehistoric looking animal. Um, showing you here what we are here, this is our group of birders that uh, is going after the, uh, uh, the finch that I was showing you before and uh, is uh, overlooking this beautiful paradisiacal island that has these light blue seas and white sands and sea lions all over the place. We are looking for the finch. <laughs> you see, um, the, there are plenty of uh, no. So this is this is a great 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 tour for a non-birding -bird spouse. Okay, so you can bring the uh, your your wife, your husband that doesn't take care about the finches, and uh, just bird these areas together with him. That it will enjoy or her will enjoy swimming and doing the snorkeling and doing all the um, normal touristic things, and uh, without intervening in your in your birding, because we always go to the Galapagos with two guides. A tropical birding guide that will make sure that you get the endemic birds and won't overlook the finches. And you have some of the local guides, uh, one local guide per uh, cruise that will come together and will be uh, giving you all the different information about geology, ecology, history, and botany, different things about the Galapagos Islands. Now, overnight again, we do this cruise in here to Floreana. This island here holds two species that are unique to Floreana. Again, they are fairly easy to get, but you need to get to the spot. If you don't, you don't see it. So, um, this one here is a photograph by, by my friend Sam Woods, medium tree finch, only located in the scrubby areas of Floreana. Okay? Remember, Floreana is just this island here, very tiny. But this one here, the Floreana mockingbird, used to be in the big island of Floreana here, but it got uh, extirpated from the big island by Annie's and other things, and now it only lives in two very tiny islets, the, the size of a stadium. Um, that's the only place that this bird breeds, and that's it. So it's critically endangered and, and that. Um, so these are the two big targets. You see, in order to go try to get that uh, mocker, we have to do these dinghy rides. We cannot even land and try to see it from the, uh, from the boats. When we manage to do these dinghy rides, we get it. It's easy again. But when uh, the park doesn't allow us or is not part of the itinerary that it is already approved to the boat, we just cannot try to get it from the big boat doing a navigation close by. But that's the thing. Once we have um, seen these um, these um, cool uh, these target birds, we go for some more picturesque birds like um, American Flamingo is one of the best places in the archipelago to see that and we can enjoy again uh, the beaches, uh, Galapagos sea lions and relax but uh, yeah be a bit more relaxed but you see this rock here that's most of the reason why most people come to this particular beach is this snorkeling down here this is called the devil's crown 
and uh, we always have a chance to see it or to, to snorkel there. So this tour, again, is great for non-burning uh, spouses because you we don't prevent them from doing other touristy stuff or other cool things that are actually my favorite, like snorkeling and the Galapagos are really cool. You can see here me a little bit thinner and Sam. Uh, we both are younger than right now. <laughs> this is about 10 years ago. And we're about to go swimming. And for that, I have, again, a book that I published, Miles McMullen, Luis D. and me, for um, uh, The Fish of Galapagos. It's a cool um, book because it is um, uh, an underwater guide. It is printed in a material that you can take it underwater and afterwards uh, mark on it with pen and pencil. But um, we put um, some effort on that one. The cool thing is that it allows us to really see and I just wanted to show you the things that we can see uh, when we do this, um, this tour. Typically we see king angel fishes and uh, we see, where are these guys? Yeah, snappers damselfish, a bunch of parrot fishes. We see at least that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yeah, four. Four species of, of that. We tend to see um, sea urchins, uh, chocolate chip sea stars are really cool. We see those. Now, I don't have a, a, an underwater camera, so I cannot show you my pictures, but I'm using this book for that. We tend to see um, panamic sea stars and surgeon fishes. Um, these are smaller ones, the, the wrasse, the rainbow wrasse, and and several different things. This uh, sunset ras. This one you can only see in Isabella. This one here, Harlequin ras, is much bigger than the others. Um, we, the typical ones that we see in terms of sharks and that we see white tip reef shark and uh, Galapagos sharks. A couple of dolphins here and there. But my favorite favorite to see is sunfish. Typically around Isabela, between Isabela and Fernandina, we can see the sunfish. That in Spanish is actually called moonfish, pez luna. Um, yeah. So here we'll be doing a uh, crossing in the afternoon to Santa Cruz. And uh, while we do these cruisings, we see a lot of different things and a lot of different pelagic birds like this. Who can tell me what this is? This, well, there's a Nazca booby right there. But these are Galapagos. Um, Galapagos. Um, Galapagos shear waters. <laughs> I got a moment there, sorry, um, that we see in this cruising. But we always see three species of storm petrels and uh, also this guy here, another of the endemics, Galapagos petrel. And this is the cruising that I was telling you. It's really rich, we typically see those things. But now we're going to Santa Cruz. And this island is one of the most important of this tour. Because in this island here, we can bird a little bit down in the coastal area and get a few of the endemics there. But the highlands is the real deal, where we need to find a few things there. So, um, in Santa Cruz, we go in the coastal areas for common cactus finch. Um, another of the 17 species of endemic finches there. Uh, we uh, start to get the... Uh, Mockingbird that we were missing, the Galapagos Mockingbird, which is our fourth Mockingbird. Again, some of the th things that we must uh, have seen already, like Galapagos Dove and Galapagos Flycatcher. Um, that is a typical Mayarcus Flycatcher if you're familiar with that genus. Um, but also, we can get uh, this one is called the Galapagos Lava Lizard. When we, when I was telling you that we want to go to the highlands is because of these birds like this, another of the finches that are only in bigger forest, that it is in the wetter areas, in the higher areas of uh, Santa Cruz. Woodpecker finch and uh, the green warbler finch. So for those two plus like vegetarian finch as well as another of the big targets, but I don't have a picture of that one, um, we go to the, to the highlands. Uh, we also get a ton, a ton of these um, medium ground finch and uh, small ground finches as well but this is one uh, funny thing so the birds here are very 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 curious 
Look at this. I hope that the resolution is good enough, but I do some pishing and check this out. Birds just swarm to you, and that's how you get the vegetarian, the large uh, tree finch, and, uh, and some of the targets that are in the highlands of, um, of Santa Cruz. And we go to the Scalesia area in this uh, muddy trail for one particular thing that it is the key and the most wanted for uh, the hardcore birders that is the Galapagos Rail. Is the only place that I actually kind of need playback, but uh, once I have to tell a story. I had my iPod completely charged overnight. I don't know what happened, it just died. The next day I'm already on the bus going to the highlands and I see if, I ha if my iPod is working, it's not, it's dead. So I go with this group here <laughs> without playback train for a rail. How easy is that? So I'm sweating and uh, happily we get to see it because I hear it singing just next to us I make everybody go behind me and do it like a semicircle and the only thing that I think I can do I have no playback I start having everybody quiet and sit and a snap and I did that for about 20 seconds solid but it felt like two hours and out of the blue this super curious bird remember that the Galapagos birds are super curious because of the lack of predation this rail that is very similar to black rail comes out exposed stays there for a second and uh, goes back in look at that this is up after it's napping when it goes in i know that it's gonna call so i bring my recorder and i record it okay who didn't see it well i'm gonna play again me 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 okay you three come here the rest please go back played it came out everybody saw it i was the hero um, that's a crazy thing. Um, yeah. Uh, now, let's go to another island. This is Bartolome, right here. And we're going to um, have a navigation also during the night in order to get to, to Bartolome. And when we get there, it's for this puppy here. Well, Bartolome is beautiful. It is one of the most visited islands because of the uh, panoramas that you can get there in Bartolome. But for the birders, this is the real deal. Galapagos um, penguin. So um, we have a chance actually to snorkel there. And if we are lucky, we can snorkel with the penguins. As uh, a very nice Spiniscus penguin. Um, it's more volcanic. You can see more of a lava exposed lava rocks and you can have the formerly lava heron now lumped again back with the striated um, another penguin another view of the penguin is just a cool thing to see them for most people this is their first penguin and uh, we can get other common things like blue-footed boobies well we get this everywhere when we are navigating after that incident with the rail that I was telling you, we can see long distance albatross and people start snapping trying to bring the albatross that is cruising just by. <laughs> just, uh, funny thing. Now, we try to go to Isabella. Okay? When we do these itineraries, we ask for one particular well and small change from the national park, and because we go to an area that it is not visited almost at all, we tend to get uh, approved this change to go here after one of the most uh, important birds of uh, or famous birds of the archipelago uh, this guy here the um, flightless cormorant so um, if we get this change and we get approved the change they are a hundred percent success rate on seeing this guy here the famous uh, cormorant very famous because it has lost the ability to to fly so it's not flightless because it only it goes underwater and feeds underwater only a lot of cormorants do that but the thing is that they have um, lost the ability because their wings now are so so short that they don't need them anymore and uh, they are like that so um, we go for that one sometimes when we go to other parts of Isabela we can do some walks in, um, in the lava 
here that is Paoe lava. You can see the volcanoes uh, of uh, Isabela here in the distance that are typica, the typical um, shield shaped volcanoes like in Hawaii. And uh, in between the rocks, the lava rocks, you can have lava cacti and uh, several other things. And this also is the best spot to see this. This is the only footage in, that I have of the other of this other endemic, pretty bad film, really. It's just really bad. I am uh, not going to be in Hollywood directing any movies soon. So that was the Galapagos Martin. And now we move on to here. If we get approved the, the, the change, we go from here to Genovesa, and if not, we go from Bartolome over here. But, Bar but Genovesa is a great place to finish the tour on a high note. This is one of the best, best islands, Genovesa. It uh, has two nice visit spots. This, is, this one here is called the um, uh, Prince Philip Steps. Uh, this is the other visit point here. It's like a horseshoe-shaped island, and this is like inside. The key one here is this one, one of the two key ones is this one, uh, the um, Genovesa Ground Finch, recently split from uh, sharp Bill Ground Finch. And this is the other one, recently split also from Large Cactus Finch, this is now called the Genovesa Cactus Finch. Those are the two key, key, key things. But apart from that, this island allows you to be really, really close to frigate birds that are many times there with their pouches and uh, great frigate birds. They, they move around you very, very close to you. <laughs> um, another of the finches that are quite um, easily found here is the large ground finch. Notice the huge bill there. Um, and the island is the main breeding uh, spot for red-footed boobies that have two morphs, the white morph and the dark morph. Um, the white morph and the dark morph, ha the subspecies is very dark in the tail for some experts on, on boobies. But this island is the best one to find these guys here. This is the um, swallowtail gull, one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful gull in the world. You see this white spot? It is said that it helps the youngster when they are feeding their babies or their chicks in the nest. They help to uh, show them that this is where they have to aim to get the, the food so that they don't poke their eyes by night because that's what they are, uh, night feeders. And you get to be really, really close to, to these beautiful birds. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be the most beautiful goal in the world. Look at those tones of slate that goes into gray and then pure white is just beautiful 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 and then well our time in the galapagos has come to an end we go back to here baltra and that's the um, airport and we just fly out and uh, have to go back to the continent and that's it that's the end or since a lot of people don't want to spend only a week in the Galapagos and get at most 70 birds that it is 70, 75 birds is the final list of the whole tour really in terms of birds. Uh, they are still Bird Thursday. Um, they come to Quito. This is a photograph from my house in Quito with the Cotopaxi volcano here and probably spend a couple nights exploring Quito as a World Heritage Site as well and uh, the churches and that but you can do a couple days in Tandayapa Bird Lodge and uh, get some other hundred species of birds in two days, <laughs> including these awesome hummingbirds. Um, yeah, booted racket tails and purple big white tips and purple throated wood stars. And um, just enjoy, enjoy that. This is Tandayapa Bird Lodge. So, this is it with me, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. See you.